you enter another world. You enter Chris Miller's world when you're looking at this work. The truth is, like, I think I always kind of knew I wanted to be an artist. I remember in grade seven doing this pencil crayon drawing of a lion. And uh, I remember a girl in class said, well, you know what you're doing for the rest of your life. And I think that was maybe the moment when I thought like, you know what, maybe I can be an artist. Everything he soaked up as a kid, watching television, going to the movies, reading comic books, playing Dungeons and Dragons, all of that somehow informs the background of his work. And it all comes tumbling out in this inventive mixture. My artistic process, I think, is different from others in that it really involves a lot of improvisation. There's almost no planning in the sculptures. Usually it just begins with, with creating one or two objects and then imagining other objects that might interact with that object. This piece took about, um, I think it's about six and a half months. I guess it's like in a miniature spaceship and it's a miniature environment. These things just grow and grow and grow until at some point there's kind of a natural place to stop. I contacted the Art Gallery of Alberta for their RBC New Works Gallery. I thought uh, it was time that Chris had a solo in a public art gallery. Calgary artist Chris Miller has taken this idea of grotesque and humorous transformation and applied it to the images of pop culture, comic books, and television. It is called the untimely transmogrification of the problem. When something from, changes from one thing to another in a humorous way, which is like a good way to describe a lot of stuff in the work. The idea of the exhibit is basically to show the transition between two-dimensional painting that I started out making to fully very complicated sculptural works. It's a wonderful exhibition that really looks at how an artist can look at the world around him, at pop culture, at television, at cartoons, but use it to create his own world and his own stories and his own universe. What I'm hoping is that it's going to look like the works are flying through space and, you know, maybe we're, we're looking into different parts of the universe. He really pulls you into the stories he's telling, not just uh, because of the, the depth and the complexity of the characters and the narratives, but also literally he kind of makes you come really close and look at the detail. The truth is, like, everybody that comes up to you at your own opening is going to tell you that your show is awesome. The best thing to do is actually to go to your own show when it's not the opening and just pretend like you're looking at the work. And I remember one guy looking at one of the paintings called Friend which is a huge, uh, big narrative based on the original Star Trek series. He was looking at it for a really long time, and he turned to his girlfriend and said, see, this is why we need artists. And that made me feel really, really good. I've always thought, really, that artists are like their work. And all the engaging qualities of Chris Miller are embodied in his, in his paintings and his sculpture. Although the works like look psychedelic and look totally wacky, like I don't use any sort of drugs at all. I remember one of my art school teachers told me that all good art is weird. And I think that he's, that he's right. And it's that weirdness that fascinates us. 